Hello everybody, this is Tanya Viet from AAE Glass. How are you guys doing today? Are you doing well? I'm doing well because I'm going to show you some cool stuff. So this is not a Saturday video. This is, we're going to call this a hot tip project video. I did, I've been doing this lately with our brand new site, aaeglass.com. And uh, I think it's working out pretty well and you guys like it. So now I'm getting emails like, could you do some more on jewelry and da da da. So I am going to do some cool techniques here. So I'm going to give you, uh, we'll start with a tip and a trick, an easy one. And then we're going to go to like three little quickie projects. And I don't get into it so much because like I said, this is just a short little video. But you're going to love it. I would say this is intermediate dichroic fused glass jewelry. Definitely this is not beginner stuff. But you got to have somewhere else to go, right? After you start slapping glass together and you need something more. So... First, we're going to start with, um, this is also, guys, now, I'm, now that I'm thinking about it, this is going to be on the website under education, and they're under free uh, educational videos. There's lots of videos up there. Check them out. And my sweet doves, I must tell you, if you are trying to log in to watch a video and it just keeps on flashing, 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 it's not because it's broken. <laughs> my sweets, I want to be, I don't want, how do I say this, Dana? It is operator error. Eh, eh, eh. Okay, so if you're trying to log in and watch a video, there's one or two things. Either you're trying to use the old password from the old website and you haven't created a new account because that information did not transfer over or you are punching in the wrong password. If you've just about had it and you can't figure it out, email us at info at aaeglass.com and we will reset your password for you. We don't want anyone to miss out. There's like 10 videos up there now for free and we also have video on demand, so that's pretty cool. Okay, here we go. Textured Dichroic, how much we love it so. I'm gonna show you, this right here is one, was one of my absolute best-selling pendants of all time and it's so easy. Um, it's just a matter of finding the right combination, I think, for you guys for, with Dichroic. There's so many coatings so on so many substrates, on so many textures, what goes with what, right? And it's an expensive material. So for you guys probably to experiment, a lot of you do fine on your own, but I'm just gonna help you out a little bit. Um, you know, I've been doing this for a long time, and uh, a long, long time, sold a lot of jewelry. I mean, it's gotta be 100,000 pieces by now. It's been years and years and years. And I have a book, a Bible of dichroic recipes, and I'm gonna share some of them for you, uh, with you. So I would like to comment on a um, post that I saw about myself, Dana, on social media. You know how I, I enjoy those so much. Absolutely. And I, and I like to surprise people in the videos. So someone had said on one of the fusing groups, why does she share so much information? I don't get it, period. That's what she said. And so I really, really thought about that for a long time. And I thought, why do I do this? Well, there's a few reasons, and I would like to share them with you. Number one, it's kind of like the Bill Gates thing. The guy's got so much money that he can't even, what's he going to do with all that money? It's just so much money. What do you need with all that money? At this point, he could just burn it and burn it and burn it and still be richer than ever and just not have any use for money. I kind of feel that way with the information that's in my head. A, I got to get it out or I'll explode. B, I got so much up here in my brain, so many recipes, so many techniques in my brain and ideas. Why not share them with you guys? What am I going to do? Am I going to go to my grave with all of these recipes? Do what? I run a distribution company now, so that's it. And the number one reason is I love to teach. And you know what else? I want to be your glass supplier. So if I want to be your glass supplier, I got to earn it. That's the way I teach my staff. So that is why I give away so much information. Thank you, dear commenter. Okay? All right. So now, first of all, uh, hello. Fusing with textured dichro. This is the herringbone, guys. Beautiful stuff. Absolutely beautiful stuff. Everything I'm going to show you is in 90 COE, um, and it's coated on uh, Euroboros glass or bullseye glass. Um, but I am right now, we are in the middle, we're going to be stocking System 96 Dichroic. We're filling up our shop right now, and I will re-release this video with 96 recipes for you guys, so don't worry. I have a big, huge wave a ball of fun coming from you 96ers in the next two months that you guys are just going to love it. So we're going to chill out a little bit on the bullseye, and we're going to go, yay, 96! And I got a lot of stuff coming for you, baby dolls, okay? All right, so... This is the herringbone right here, and we all know that when you fuse herringbone and you put it on a piece of glass, it's so beautiful, it's a great seller, the buyers love it. What happens? You get these a lot of the times, can you zoom in on this, Dana? This beautiful, not so beautiful, gray striations. You see it in there, guys? It's that great, what, what is that? That's trapped air is what that is. 
So when you take this and you fuse it on a piece of base glass, obviously these ripples trap air in between. Ugh, it's been the bane of all of our jewelry, of all of our existence as jewelry artists, right? So you can see it. Can you get a close up of this one, Dana? Yes. You can see, look at all in there. Now, maybe a buyer would know. Personally, I think I can't stand the way it looks. I, I, can't, I hate it, okay? So I'm gonna show you a trick to get 90% rid of those. It's still gonna happen on the pieces of herringbone. Like, it's probably real hard for, um, I'll try this. Does that help a little bit, Dana? Yes. Okay. If you look at this herringbone straight across the top here, there are some waves of the herringbone that are really tall. Like this one right here in the center, it's actually, that herringbone wave is much taller than the rest. So guess what? That this, all this glass is gonna settle down and this one's gonna come in last and that's usually where it forms one of those gray striations. So you cut, you're kind of in trouble with that. Maybe you know cut around those real tall ones if you can or don't use them, but if you wanna use them, um, we can always cover them up with some kind of embellishment. But what you guys wanna do is, so when you're doing this and you're taking a piece of, let's just use this for a base real quick, pretend this is black, of herringbone, and ripple is also one herringbone and ripple because the ripples are so high. Go ahead and put it on your base glass. Let's just pretend you're gonna do that. And then you would just put it into your kiln like this, right? Okay, one fusing, then you get all the disgusting gray striations that, that plague our jewelry, okay? So I'm gonna tell you guys this, if it bothers you that much, if it doesn't bother you that much, then, then you don't have to listen to this and wait till the next project. But what I do with my ripple and my herringbone is I fuse them upside down, okay? I actually fuse them upside down. So what happens is, <clears throat> where the bubbles go? Well, they go towards the back of the piece is where they go and they're hidden because usually you have an, an opaque uh, base, okay? So as you can see on this one right here, I don't have any of those ugly, ugly gray striations. Um, so that's pretty cool. So fuse the herringbone and the ripple upside down. Just, you know, whatever, make your build, wherever your build is, like that, and boom, right upside down, okay? And those bubbles will go right towards the back of the piece, flip it over. So then you're gonna have this very flat piece, aren't you? So here is, with great reward, there is always some kind of thorn in our side, isn't there? You gotta do two fusings, guys. That's two fusings, okay? So what you gotta do is once this, this comes out, you're gonna have to flip it over and then put it back in your kiln, right side up to puff it back up, it's gonna be flat. But, you know, you don't have those gray striations because I've had plenty, like for this, if, if I, this was my day when I was selling in all the galleries and shows, this would not be acceptable. And people would see this and that's a whole waste of dichroic. So to me, to throw in 20 pieces into my kiln, and do it upside down and then fire it again right side up, that's worth it because I have 20 sellable pieces, not four or five that are really bad and then 14. So hope that makes sense everybody. So on that note, I'm going to give you a little quickie project, one of my favorites. So I'm wondering if you guys know what this stuff is. What this is, is this is the darker portion of the stripes dichroic that CBS makes. And when we started distributing for CBS, people would call and say, I got the darker portion on my glass, or there's black, there's nothing in there, and they would want to return it. So this kept happening, and then I thought, gosh, I love that stuff. Why are people returning this stuff? Why are they? I know, so now what we do is we actually cut that portion out of the dichroic sheet, so that doesn't happen to you guys anymore. But then I have the guys in the warehouse, I have them bring me all the scrap of this stuff, and I have them put it in a huge bucket for me because I love it. First of all, this is the darker portion of the stripes coloring, and this happens with Rainbow One, Two, and they have the very dark, dark blue sections. Everybody shies away from that stuff. I absolutely love it. This is not black, guys. There is coating on here. There is, it's like a royal blue. If you tilt it, you can, you can really see it in the deepest, darkest purple. I love it. There's still a dichroic coating on here. It's just very dark. This is great for nighttime pieces. The ladies like to go out at night. They can do a little cha-cha, do a little mojito, okay? They like to have a lot of fun out there, okay? So at nighttime, they wanna wear their dark jeans, their black shirts. So make a dark piece of jewelry for them. So this is what I did. This is the dark part of the stripes. Now, where do you get this stuff? Okay, here comes my sales pitch, but this is the deal and everyone's gonna get mad at me, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Right now, for a limited time only, this is the four ounce, that's a lot, guys, a lot, a lot, a lot. Four ounce of the dark stripes, there's a little bit of the peach in there from the ends, and you could use that for something else. We have a very limited amount of this, why? Because it takes 20 sheets to build up before we can actually have enough to sell. So, we'll put that on the website, it's gonna be under Dichroic Scrap Pack, limited edition scrap packs, but that's the first thing, that's the Tanya Especial, okay? Well, let's say those are out of stock and you're mad and then you want to write me and go, I'm mad at you, you don't have a lot. Well, we don't have a lot. But you could use yellow blue, 
yellow violet. Okay, the darker portion of rainbow one, guys. Okay, the, 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 the goal is when you order rainbow one squares, okay, everybody knows you get four by fours, right? When you're a jewelry artist, you normally don't buy a full sheet unless you, you've got major production going or you've got a commission or something like that. So when you pick rainbow one, it goes from dark blue all the way over to the red. Well, it's kind of potluck which one you get, isn't it? Okay, so you got to find a way to use both, and that's what I'm going to show you today. Use the darker portion, but it's got to be thin, and it's got to be plain. How are you guys going to remember all this? Because I'm going to put it in to install it into the website for you and I will have links in the newsletter um, that you hopefully have opened. Okay, everybody? And it will all be on the site, everyone. So don't worry, I'm gonna put the recipes on the site, everything, okay? So here's your base, the cool fancy dancy black or black blue stripey stuffy, okay? And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a piece of thin clear. This glass is thin, dichroque is thin. I never use thick dichroque anymore unless it's textured. So that's that. Then I have a thin, clear piece. This could be either manufacturer Bullseye 96, Wismach, you know, whatever you want to do. Obviously, you can't combine the COEs, I'm saying, with whichever one that you use. Notice it's a little bit bigger than the dichro bottom. Here's why. I'm going to take my triple rearing, it's triple rainbow herringbone. If we run out of triple rainbow herringbone, say that 10 times fast, um, you could use Rainbow two herringbone, you could use, and, and I'm gonna give you guys a list of alternates, so don't worry about that, okay? But you want something very strong in color. You're gonna fuse it like this, okay? So we'll show how it looks before it goes in. Can you get that, Dane? Yeah. Okay, notice this clear is a little bigger. Why is that? A, you can't fuse dichro to dichro, so you, have, you can't just do that because what? The metal oxide coatings on the dichroic, same thing with the iridized glass, they will not fuse together, okay? Because uh, the coating on iridized glass and dichroic, that, that doesn't melt. The glass melts. The coating doesn't melt. They don't, they don't stick, okay? So I put the clear in between as a buffer, all right, which is cool, and then I go like this, but the clear has to be a little bit bigger because if I, the clear was the same size, what would happen is the, these two sides would curl up a little bit because the dichro would touch, okay? So by putting the clear a little bit larger, I go ahead and let that melt in. I have that clear kind of frame around there um, so the sides don't clear up. <clears throat> Excuse me. So you can already see that that's cool looking. But how am I going to fuse this? Come on, young doves, young doves, medium doves, older doves, experienced doves, all you doves, okay? You're going to go down like this if you're squeezing bubbles, right, everybody? If you don't care about the gray striations, you're just going to go up in here. So after you fuse it down, you then have to come back for an alternate firing and full fuse straight up. Yes. Now, we've got three millimeters, five millimeters, seven millimeters, okay? It's a little bit over the, the uh, original footprint of six millimeters of glass. So you're gonna have a little bit of blob out, you're gonna have a little bit of clear. All you gotta do is take it to a grinder, easy peasy, seconds, seconds, five minutes, okay? It's worth it to sell something like this. These little dots down here, I had a little bubble here, and so I thought I gotta put something right there. I decided to use the PBO Shimmer paints. Um, these are these are not these are non-toxic and they're low fire paints they fire in your oven you can fire them in your kiln um, at i think it's 300 the directions are on here and i just had a little and these are all metallic paints so i just made a design element out of it boom there you go okay so that's the first one so it's dark stripes if you can't get this stuff we're out of stock don't panic or stress yellow violet yellow blue i'll list it all for you clear just a little bit bigger and then I have the very strong coating of herringbone on top. A strong coating, guys. What does that mean? It does not mean black cherry. It does not mean sunset blend. It means rainbow two. Heavy metal oxide coating. Silver. Rainbow two. Um, uh, stripes. Uh, what do we got? We got tropical rays. You know, so I'll leave you guys a list. Use it. Boom. Done. Let's move on to the next one. Okay. This is just something really quick, want to point it out, and then we're going to go to the two um, kind of comp little more complicated projects. Okay, so red dichroic. Dana, you love this, don't you, baby girl? She, Beautiful. She loves red, 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 okay? So, so many emails for the past years that people say, how can I achieve a true red? Because we all know that when you fire dichroic, even though it says red, it comes out an orangey red. It's not a true red. So I'm going to give you my recipe. It will be uh, on the website and uh, or the newsletter, either one that you guys get, but it'll be accessible to you all the time. Um, uh, yeah, so this is pretty awesome. Okay, so what you're going to do is you can get any of the coatings. Okay, so we'll just kind of do this so Dana can kind of show because uh, that would be cool too. Any of the coatings that are in cyan copper, cyan dark, dark red, um, dark 
Cyan Dark Red, you can do the Target Rainbow portion, Aurora Borealis, awesome stuff, awesome stuff. Anything basically in the gold or reddish or orangish family of the, the dichroic coatings, okay? So I'll put some, I will put some uh, choices for you on the internet that all that work um, just, just fine, okay? So you could just have a plain one with no texture, you could have texture, you could have, uh, you know, use accordion, whatever you wanna do, any of the textures would be pretty cool. So all you do for this, and the key to this is the top portion of your glass build. So all you're gonna do for this is, here is my orangey. It's actually, um, you can see right now it looks an orangey. It's cyan copper, and that's accordion. That's what I use in that piece. And so that's two millimeter. And then what I do is I take a piece of yellow, red, streaky striker. We've got tons of it in stock, guys. And so let me tell you something. One of the reasons that AAE Glass has a five by tens is because I am a jewelry artist at heart. I, I am teaching mostly big stuff now. But I'm a jewelry artist at heart. I will, we, I will not let them go away. We had a meeting six months ago. They said, you know, they don't sell as much as the big sheets. I said, you know what? But the jewelry artists need them. So just get a five by 10 of this stuff, guys. It's 25% off all the time. You know that already. It's five bucks, six bucks. Just get it. And I mean, you can make a lot of penance out of that, okay? So all you gotta do is do your cyan, copper, orangey stuff, and then go ahead and put your yellow striker on top and it's going to fuse. It's gonna take the orange away and then you're gonna get that beautiful red right there, okay? So that's that's that for that. So notice this though, this is two millimeters, this is three, which is five millimeters. Glass wants to be six millimeter thick. I will tell you right now, I'm, I mean, I'm probably gonna get a lot of emails about this one, but really you can fuse 5.4, 5.2, five millimeters for jewelry. It's gonna work out just fine. You're not gonna get a lot of dog boning or anything. But if you just think that that's not gonna happen and you wanna use more glass, you can always put a thin black base underneath it um, and just kind of do that. Now you're gonna be at seven millimeters and it's gonna blob out a little bit. So do me a favor guys, try the five, grind it up a little bit in the sides. It'll be easy to grind up because it'll be fast and it'll be thin. Okay, so that is that. Okay, so next we're gonna move on to something with the Alchemy Gold Glass. Okay, here's another one for you. Getting a little bit harder. This is a pendant that was made with Bullseye Alchemy Silver to Gold Glass. And you guys probably have a lot of this left over from one of the videos that I did um, using the Alchemy Glass. And I'm not going to get into the Alchemy too much because that's a whole other video and that's on the website um, at aeglass.com. And um, basically, the long and short of it, the long and the short of it is, combined with silver foil, this glass will turn um, the foil will turn gold with this uh, reactive glass. Okay. So that being said, you guys can research that on your own. I'll show you how I made this. So this is pretty cool, and I'm gonna have Dana zoom in if she can. I don't know how close you can get to this thing, Dana, because this thing is so full of depth and loveliness, and you can see all the layers just boom, 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 boom. And the thing that really makes it with dichroic pendants is some of the subtlety um, as well as the strong point. So like right here on top, I've got an accordion blue and it's just very faint because it's the darkest, darkest blue, but it just, when you, when you trans, what, what does dichroic have transmitted reflective properties? And when you view it from different angles, that blue really pops out. Right here is the gold, which has a nice black line around it. I love it. So this is definitely a night, a nighttime piece. Um, and that kind of reacted with the metal oxide from the dichroic and gave it this nice, this cool black lines. What you'll notice is that this foil uh, right in here that has turned gold is also kind of cracked and um, weathered looking. And that is because the glass underneath it stretched. In other words, it's two, this is eight millimeters, so the volume's kind of larger. So the glass stretched and it pulled the, uh, the, the silver foil with it. So that's why that happened which I love that look, I love it. I'm all about seeing down into the layers. And then way down there in the bottom, I have a piece of wafer thin um, corkscrew dichroic. So the first thing that you have to establish is I like, I love rainbow one accordion, guys. Rainbow one accordion is fantastic. But there's always a cooler side of the glass and then the warmer side of the glass. And when you order it, normally you just don't know which one you're going to get. So all you have to do is the recipe I'm going to give you, I'll give you one for the cool side and the, and the warm side. We'll show the cool side right now. But the first thing you have to establish is what's going to be on top, which is the accordion is going to be on top. You don't know that yet. I haven't gone through the whole thing. But, um, and then you want to match those colors. If your accordion was the red or the orange part of the glass, you would match the colors and still use the gold alchemy glass. And then you would get a more of a warm toned piece. I think this would look dynamite 
dynamite in jeans. Does anybody think that? Because I think that is true. And uh, maybe even some Jordan. Remember the Jordache jeans, Dana, in the 80s? Those <laughs> yes. were the best. Just with the Jordache <laughs> jeans and your comb in your pocket and the roller skating rink with the pom poms, girls. I know you're out there. Woo, woo, you're thinking that right now? Those were the days, Dana, weren't they? <laughs> Jukebox hero play. Okay, anyways. So here we go. This is this one, all right? So let's put that aside for now. This is how I did this. I know that I'm going to use the blue side of the accordion. That is going to be my top piece. Okay, this is going to be a four layer piece, everybody. Four layer piece. And everything is going to be thin except for one piece of glass, and that's going to be the alchemy. And I wanted to use the thicker alchemy. Yes, you could use the thin, guys. You could use the thin alchemy. I'm not saying you can't. Not the iodized, by the way. But I used the thicker, the three millimeter, because I wanted that glass to be thick underneath, and I wanted that glass to stretch and spread out to kind of pull that silver foil apart because glass wants to be six millimeters thick and if it's not it's gonna go and flow until you contain it so i don't contain these these jewelry pieces you probably could make a big brick and slice it up it'll be a little bit thick but so i pick a piece of textured glass i love the thin um radium in the darker colors so that could be any color that you guys choose i love the wismock figure c actually that's what i made that with wismock figure c corkscrew but the darker portions of the sheet uh, again, I'll have this on the website for you guys. Don't panic, okay? So you can write it down. So I want to match these up. I want to match my bottom piece to my top piece. Oop, Dana's telling me to show it, okay? So that's that's the radium corkscrew, but that's the darker portion of the sheet. Nothing wrong with the darker portions, okay? Uh, I think it was just um, a mixture. You got it? Okay. So that's my base. My second layer is my three millimeter, my thicker alchemy it's called silver to gold alchemy glass and that's what that is make sure you guys mark that with a sharpie or something so you know it's not clear you guys should have that contained in an area so you know it's not clear um if you don't have silver foil on it it's just going to be clear but it is more expensive so you want to mark that so that's layer one layer two is the alchemy and then i have a piece of silver pure then what i do is i take my craft knife can you see if i do that mm -hmm. i take my craft knife i gotta hold it and i pull some of the silver why am i doing this so i can show way down in there into the depths of heaven okay i'm doing this to show that glass underneath so it's already starting to be cool right when you're doing layering what is the idea of layering of dichroic why why do you layer you layer for depth so if you have all these layers together and you're blinding out things just throwing dichro on top of each other without a way to see down into there way 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 down into the depths then it's not cool, okay? So now I have that. Now what I have to do is I need a thin clear cap, everybody, a thin clear cap on that because I can't fuse dichro to silver. That's a metal also, it, does, it will not work, okay? So I go ahead and I put the thin clear on here. My final layer is my rainbow one accordion. Thin, everybody, thin, 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 thin. And it's the cool side because I'm using you know the blues down here on the bottom, the darker blues, so I want the blues from the rainbow one sheet makes sense doesn't it try to experiment with other stuff i you know there's got to be a thousand of them different uh recipes you could do now if i did this we're gonna throw a loop at you here if i did this like this okay fine but all of that dichro coating that's on here is going to blind out those layers underneath so i have to open it up just like i did the silver foil so what i'll do is i'll take the etching cream etch all make sure that you have your gloves on and I'm going to use this long barbecue stick right here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the dichroic side. Now, I'm going to put a piece of black so you guys can see. Tell me if they can see. Is that, you got that? Yep. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I'm not going to hold the glass because I don't have gloves on. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of make some little striations in here. Not a lot. Don't kill it. All I'm trying to do is remove a little bit of that coating and some striations to open up the rainbow one accordion so you can see down through all those other awesome pieces of awesomeness okay so i'm gonna wait i'm gonna keep this on there's an etching video on the website if you're not familiar to do um is you're going to rinse this etching cream off when it's time, how do you know when the etching cream is done? When you look at it from behind and you can see, kind of tilted, Dana will not be able to capture this on camera, you can kind of see that it's clear and the coloring is gone. And why are we doing that? To make it clear to have windows to see the rest of my layers. So I rinse this off and please rinse this off and then 
Of course you have to clean your glass, guys. I hate showing that in videos because it's a waste of time. Everybody knows they got to clean their glass. That's how I feel about it. So then I have this piece right here. I just happen to have it etched for the video. And then I place it on top, texture down. Okay, so that is this. This is going to be nine millimeters of glass. Why? Because, here we go, two millimeters thin. I have my alchemy gold, three millimeters. I have my thin clear as a buffer between your dichroic and then your silver foil. And also, it gives you additional layer of depth. And then you have two millimeters. So if you add all that up, that's nine millimeters. So is this going to stretch? Yes, it is. If anybody has a lap wheel at home or a wet belt sander, you might want to make a big brick of this. Let it be thick, cut it up, and then bevel it on your lap wheel. How awesome would that be, Dana? Fantastic. Pretty awesome, okay? <laughs> so that's up to you. Otherwise, you're going to go ahead, it's going to blob out, and you're going to have some grinding. If you have a tile saw, you can nip off the excess glass really quick. And as I said, this is not baby stuff. This is Intermediate Dichroic 101. I got about 5,000 of these products in my head, by the way. So I'm going to start giving some of those to you guys uh, periodically between my boot camps and running a company. How's that? Okay, so <laughs> anywho, that's how it is. Make sure your texture is down, and then that's this right here. Okay, so experiment. So this is the blues, and if you, if you had... Um, you had the alchemy bronze. Maybe you would put that with your red tones. The gold would work too. I prefer the gold. I did do one in bronze. It was oh pretty cool. I would say it was a 7 out of a 10. This, I feel, is a 10. All right, how about one more for him, Dana? What do you think? I think that's a good idea. All right, let's go. Okay, last tip for today. And this one is a rock star tip. Um, I used to sell the bejesus out of these guys, okay, at my art shows and then to my galleries. There's so much depth and so much involved here, you're going to be kind of surprised when you see the recipes. So Dana is showing you dun, 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 um, some of my favorite recipes right now. I just love them. This is more of your nighttime piece right here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to we're going to do a little promotion because we're going to do. I will going to I'm going to give you one of these recipes for free. I'm going to give you lots of recipes that we haven't even talked about for free on uh, the newsletter. I think about 10 guys, even more than that. It's like 15 maybe tons of them. I'm going to give you lots. Okay. But besides that, these four were my best sellers. And I'll tell you what, anybody who places an order over $100 on aeglass.com through next week. How about we'll do it until next Friday. Today's date is February 3rd. We'll do it to the 10th. Anybody who places a $100 order in Dichroic or more gets uh, a handout with all of these secret recipes. And that I think is cool, but I want to show this. Dana, get into this bad boy right here. Right here. This had to be top 10, of, and I made a lot of jewelry, guys, I'm telling you. This has to be top 10 of my best sellers of all time. This is this is a beauty, okay? So that's what we'll do. So this is what we're going to do right now, the project. This is something different. This is just a bonus. But anybody who orders $100 worth of Dicro in the next week gets all of these secret recipes in your box. This will not be released to the Internet. This will be in your package, okay? But we still have a lot of free ones, so don't worry about it. I'm giving you about... I don't know how to count them, 12 to 15 for free. All right, so Dana, if you're ready, let's come on over here. All right, so this is kind of how one of those pieces started, and this is a lot of work involved, um, a lot of steps, and so I will list those for you, no problem. So we'll give you one of these for free, and we'll do this one. This one's not, this not one has not been cut up and shaped, but I'm going to let Dana zoom in on that. Actually, Dana, can I do this? Yeah, that's good. Yeah, to show there's a lot of stuff going on there. Uh, I love this stuff, okay? You can see the dichroic underneath has broken up because there's a little more volume. I love that look. I love it, love it. Like It's like, I don't know, it's like grainy or something. It's one of my favorite things that dichro does. Okay, so that's from the glass having too much volume underneath and stretching, and the glass is stretching, not the dichro, okay? All right, so there is a key component to this. So for the past month, we have been running a promotion, and we had all orders over $200, not just dichro, just, we had a promotion for the past month that was all orders over $200, any kind of supplies or glass would get a free 4x4 four four of double mini splatter um, from Dichroic CBS. It was a major promotion, okay? And then we started giving them, and then people were writing going, I don't know what to do with this stuff because the Dichro is on both sides. So I seen a couple things, they would just put a piece of color, put the splatter clear on top. Okay, that's fine. <coughs> Excuse me, everybody. I'm just getting over the flu. Um, so, 
Yeah, okay, that's cool. But let me show you something else. This is what I use it for. Now, one of these four by four squares is 20 bucks. The retail value is 19.95 because it's coated on both sides. Now you can see there's a splatter and then there's clear parts in here, okay? So all of those recipes that Dana showed you of just a few seconds ago were made with double mini splatter and something else. And here's how it goes. Now, I would experiment with this on your own and make little cubes, okay? I'm gonna get just a little, little, little cubes of these because this glass is expensive. And also, this can get into a mess real quick because we're also going to use frit. <clears throat> Here's how the layout goes. It's going to go, you have a uh, transparent base. And of course, you could bring that base down to a two millimeter if you wanted to to cut down the volume a little bit and didn't want so much of the, of the grainy looking dichro where it's stretched, okay? It's way back in there. It's, it's almost impossible for Dana to see, but it's, it's actually stretched. So you could, you could make it a, uh, a thin, but it's got to be transparent, okay? So you got to figure out that color first. Then what you're going to do is you're going to use the Mardi Gras Dichroic. You can use the, the vanilla or you can use the black. Either will work. Experiment with both. This stuff is awesome, okay? I, I love this stuff. I've always loved this stuff. It's just, it's just beautiful on its own. It's three millimeters thick, and um, it's just fantastic glass. It's just an easy no-brainer just to, to sell if you are a seller or to wear because it's beautiful, okay? So I'm using the clear and they have black and then they have the vanilla and there's several different coatings. And I, I, my favorites are Mixture and Rainbow 2 and Rainbow Streaks and you'll see why in a second. So there's that blue and then I put this one. Now when you get scrap packs and things like that, you can buy these by the 4x4, four four, um, but this is a mixture which has blue and violet tones. So hint, hint, you're going to use probably a blue, blue, something in the blue family for the base. Your third layer is going to be the double mini splatter dichroic okay double mini splatter now so obviously this dichroic is down because this won't fuse otherwise okay double mini splatter now the double minis come in one color only and it's kind of random draw so you want to look at your your splatter and see what's going to match the color scheme that you have going on this has a little bit of a magenta but it also has blues and purples which will go perfectly okay so then i do that now you could just clear cap that with a thin layer of clear and be done but I like to add a little flavor and I like to add medium uh, fine will work. Of course, it's just a little bit larger to have a larger blob of color. But <clears throat> I tend to stick with the medium and the coarse for this. What you're going to do is take a little bottle full of hairspray and you're going to spread it around here. Okay. And then you're going to use transparent frit only, transparent frit only. And you're going to sprinkle it all over here like that. Sprinkle it all over here like that. Okay. Spread it around, okay? So not too much. We, we're not trying to color the whole top. We're trying to accent the whole top, okay? So now, Dana, if you would go back to these lovely pieces of jewelry, please. That is how every single one of these were made. So what's the difference? Different color, Mardi Gras. Different, I've got four frits on that, four frits on that, three frits on that. It's all one pie. You guys get what I'm saying? It's, it's, it's ingredients to the pie. One whole thing that makes it look, look fantastic. And I can tell you that... You've got to know your colors um, or do a lot of experimenting and don't just wing it because this can get ugly real quick, okay? So um, that's that. And I don't clear cap this. I leave it open. I leave my window open here for the frit. I just kind of open it up. Now what happens is that frit will, see this one has, this is transparent yellow and tints those little areas and then it also um, tints the splatter. It's, it's amazing. So this one's not shaped or cut up, but this is a good representation of the size of the piece if you used this formula right here. It's not too bad. I mean, you could just cut it. It's all, you know, cut your shape to begin with, with a triangle or whatever you wanted to cut or a rectangle. It's it's pretty much spot on. It's only three millimeter, six millimeter, because that dichro is six, seven, eight millimeters. Not far off. You could switch this up for thin if you wanted to. You get less depth, but you could switch it up for thin to keep your volume down. Just pre-cut your shapes, guys, if you don't have a saw and then grind it. You know, you wouldn't do a square and then grind it into a triangle. You'd cut a triangle shape of glass. And in the spirit of things, I'm going to show you one twist on it. Okay, one twist. Dana, should I tell them the twist? Absolutely. Dana said yes. She always says yes to you guys. Gosh, she's nicer than me. Sometimes, you know. All right, I'll show you a twist. Here we go. <laughs> so Mardi Gras, the coating on the Mardi Gras is super super thick okay so this is what 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 happens in that vacuum chamber chamber at cbs guys it's layers of metal oxides that come down 
so beautifully and it's layers and layers and layers and these layers form a color a recipe it's the best way to describe it in layman's terms okay so this one happens to be rainbow two coating um this is the streaks or the triple rays there's several that will work i will let you guys know what those are now rainbow two is a very strong coating there's lots lots and lots of layers of metal oxide color on here so what I thought was this is the best glass to do this with. This is, this is tricky, okay? So if, if you mess it up, don't worry about it. Just don't do it again, <laughs> okay? So what I'm going to do, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some etching cream. I've got my gloves on, right, guys? You got your gloves on. And I'm going to go ahead and give this a little choppity chop, 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 little hashes of cream. Now, what I want to do is I want to take this off very quickly. I'm going to say 30 seconds to a minute. You guys are going to wait and you're going to rinse it off. I do not want the etching cream to go all the way through to the clear glass. What is this? This is, this is streamer glass with dichroic coating on it. If you take away the dichroic coating, you have streamer glass. That's what you have, okay? So what I want to do is I want to take off this dichroic coating early. I don't want to let it go all the way through. Keep going, Dan because what I want to do is capture other colors in the background. This is awesome. This is one of my trade, trade secrets with etching, okay? So I go ahead, I clear it off in the sink, guys, not here with a paper towel. I just don't have time to run over there and do it, okay? And then what happens is, and it's almost impossible to see. Can you see the streaking, Dane? No. I, it's hard to see. But what happens on camera, I can see the big purple right through there, and I can see a gold coming right here. Um, so if you don't see a lot of streaking, go ahead and put a little more etching cream on. But what happens is, I want you guys to think of it like this, okay? All right, Dan, I'm going to do my layer demonstration with my hands. Ready? Okay, here's how it goes. Let's say we have a piece of silver here, okay? Silver dichroic. So when they make it in the chamber, it could go emerald, one layer of emerald, one layer of magenta, one layer of red, then silver, okay? That is a recipe to make silver. I don't know if that's the, exactly it, but I can tell you those colors come out when you etch it. So I put the etching cream on. Instead of going all the way down through the layers to the clear glass, like people like to do when they do designs, I stop it between the layers. So I, the etching cream is down. I remove the silver. Okay, then I'm down here to the red. Hmm, do I want to go further? Okay, I'll, take, I'll peel back the red. And then I have magenta. Stop, take it off. Then where your etching cream is, you have magenta, and your background is silver. Okay? All right, so that's a, that's a trick. So if you don't see a lot of coloring, the best coloring to do this with, the best glass is the Mardi Gras um, and the stronger coatings of glass. For a limited time, we will have Mardi Gras packs, very limited, again, because we cut down the, the sheets and then we take the corners and make them to scrap. So what I did, guys, is I had the warehouse cut and make you guys four ounce packs. And these are going to go quick. I, I think we only have 40 of them. And I told them to leave them in the biggest pieces that you can so you can get big pieces of jewelry. So check that out. Huge pieces, four ounce, okay? And if we run out of those, we have the four by four inch squares of Monte Ground. We've got lots of those, okay? So anyways, guys, I hope you understand that. Make sure you rinse and clean your glass completely. That etching cream is no good for your glass. You don't want to fuse that in. It'll cause grayness and striations and bubbles, okay? So what happens if you go all the way through? Well, you went all the way through, and then you put it on. So let's, let's look. So here's a piece that I have actually etched, and I went all the way through. And Dana, can they see that? You can see the spots there. Yeah. I went all the way through. So what happens? It shows the blue. Not a horrible thing, so don't take off too much. Play with this at first. Get a little timer. I can tell you it's between 30 seconds and a minute and a half. Get it off the glass and watch the magic happen. Rainbows of colors. It's beautiful. Whew. Not bad for a quick tip video of the day, huh? All right, guys, I thank you so much. Thank you for su supporting AAE Glass. We thank Dana. We thank all of you. And guys, if you cannot log into that video, you've got to open up a new account if you didn't when the new website came or you are punching in the wrong password, my sweets, okay? Let us know if you need help. We're always here for you to help. And remember, guys, we'll always be there for you guys, always. And we will do whatever we can to bend over backwards to correct it. That's what we're known for. That's what we'll do. Bye-bye, everybody.